It's the highlight of the year in Washington, D.C., the blooming of almost 4,000 cherry blossom trees around the city. This year, we made sure to see the blossoms and ride these specially wrapped trains and buses. Also this year, to top it all off, Metro was hosting their Fleet of the Future Expo, where you can tour a mock-up of their brand new 8000 series trains that are coming soon. Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new video. I'm Tom and spring has finally arrived here in Washington DC. Spring in DC means one thing, cherry blossoms. Now for me personally, cherry blossoms are very special. As some of you might know, I grew up in Tokyo, Japan, and so some of my favorite childhood memories are picnicking with my family and my friends under the sakura trees. And so when Lindsay and I moved to Washington DC, we were super excited to finally get to see the cherry blossoms here. And now they've arrived. Now we're not the only ones excited about the cherry blossoms. As you can see, there's a lot of people around us, but the Washington Metro has also done a lot to prepare for cherry blossom season. So let's go back about a week and look at some of the preparations. So right now, it's about 10 days before peak bloom. We've decided to take a walk along the mall and the tidal basin to see how far the blossoms have come. Right now, most trees are still buds. There are a few flowers popping, and then there's this one tree that already has a preview of what's to come. The most famous spot to view these blossoms is around the tidal basin. That's because about 2,500 of the 4,000 cherry blossom trees in DC are located here. Before the flowers bloom, the area is relatively quiet. The only people here are people like us, folks who are checking up on the progress, anxious to see them, and the occasional helicopter in the sky. Or a Norfolk Southern locomotive pulling an Amtrak train into DC. You don't see that every day. So peak cherry blossom season is right around the corner, but until then there's plenty of stuff to do. Let's go check out what Metro has done to celebrate this season. Every Metro station has these cute stickers on the station attendant's office, but the real showstopper is the cherry blossom train. Since Randy Clark became the new general manager at WMATA, the system has been seeing more and more specially wrapped trains and buses. Lindsay and I moved to DC late last spring, and since then, we've seen a pride wrap for the month of June, a fireworks wrap for the 4th of July, Veterans Day wrap in November, and of course a gingerbread wrap for Christmas. And to be honest, I love this tradition. It makes riding the metro that much more fun. Hopefully this year we'll see a bunch of new ones as well. Hey Metro, if you're taking suggestions, could you do a pumpkin wrap for October? I'll even design it for you. Anyways, this year's cherry blossom wrap features a deep blue background with large pink flowers. It's covering a 6000 series train.
another thing you have to do is get the special cherry blossom smart tree. Now I'm at Metro Center Station, which is one of the few stations that sells them. And, and thankfully there's a big sign on top that tells you this is one of those vending machines that has them. I know just where I'm going to use this. On the special cherry blossom bus. That's right, you thought there was just a cherry blossom train? There's a bus too. In fact, there's several running all across the DMV. Of course the DC Circulator had to have their own special Sakura bus as well, albeit a slightly more modest one. Alright, there's one more thing that we can do in anticipation of the cherry blossoms. I've come to the National Mall, kind of by Smithsonian Station, and behind me over there, you see a big tent and some crews at work. That is going to be the Metro Fleet of the Future Expo. So they're gonna have a pop-up store where you can buy merch. There's going to be one of their new electric buses, and there's gonna be a full-scale mock-up of their brand new Open Gangway 8000 series. The exhibit will be open from March 20th until April 3rd. Everybody can go and look at the brand new trains. So I've walked around a little bit, try to see if I could see a little bit. There are a few glimpses that you can catch looking inside, but for the real thing, I guess we'll have to just wait until it's open. I wish that day would come already. Oh look, the cherry blossoms are here. It's a Monday morning, it's March 18th, and peak bloom has finally arrived. And it's a lot earlier than people thought it would be. It's just been really, really warm the last few days. So I was going to upload this video next week, but I think I'll do it today just because it's already here. Now, we just enjoyed a nice stroll across the mall and around the tidal basin, and there was barely anybody out because here's a secret. Come early in the morning, but don't tell your friends. This is just between you and me. While the Cherry Blossom Festival officially started this past Wednesday on March 20th, Peak Bloom began on Monday the 18th. As we admire the blossoms around the tidal basin, let's talk about why DC has so many of these beautiful trees to begin with. So as you know, cherry blossom trees are abundant in Japan and they form an important part of the culture there. Japan was closed off to the rest of the world for many centuries, but in the late 1800s, the country began letting foreigners in again. One of the first people to travel there was a woman named Eliza Skidmore, who proposed bringing back some of the trees and planting them in DC. Sadly, nobody really listened to her. Until 1906, when a certain Dr. David Fairchild had 76 trees shipped to a Maryland neighborhood just outside of the district. He wanted to see how well they'd cope in the climate here. Turns out, the trees did great, and so he began spreading more and more trees around the city. He even gave some of them to school kids and told them to plant them. Eliza Skidmore, the lady from earlier, saw this, and she wanted to raise money so that the district could buy all the trees. She petitioned the first lady, Mrs. Helen Taft, who would soon join the cause. Now, at the same time, there just so happened to be a Japanese scientist in town, Dr. Jokichi Takamine. He got involved, and in 1909, he finally got the mayor of Tokyo to donate 2,000 trees to DC. Unfortunately, the donated trees were so disease-ridden and filled with bugs that they all had to be destroyed. But then, in 1912, a new batch was sent. This time, there were more than 3,000 trees in 12 different varieties, and they've been here ever since. In 1934, the District of Columbia officially began hosting the National Cherry Blossom Festival. We went to see the blossoms again that afternoon so we could see the flowers in different lighting. Of course, it was more crowded than early in the morning, but it still wasn't too bad. 
On our walk, we stopped by Stumpy, an iconic tree who is sadly scheduled to be removed. The National Park Service is removing around 150 trees to rebuild the seawall here, protecting the land and the trees around the basin. Stumpy, you will be missed. Lynn, what are your thoughts on the cherry blossoms? They're so pretty. I'm glad we came when the sun was setting. We came this morning during sunrise, and it was a little dark, so now it's nice and sunny. The sheer amount of trees around the tidal basin make it a must-go for tourists and locals alike, but it's not the only part of town where you can catch a glimpse of this spring beauty. Of course, there are many other places throughout the city and the entire DMV where you can see cherry blossoms. Think of East Potomac Park, Georgetown, Foggy Bottom. There's some really nice ones up in Tenley Town. And then now I'm in the Kenwood neighborhood of Montgomery County, Maryland, where people recommended that I check out the cherry blossoms here because apparently this is a famous spot for it. And looking at the blossoms in Kenwood, I met some new friends. They subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. You should too. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. All right, good morning. So it's Wednesday, March 20th now. It's almost nine o'clock and the Fleet of the Future Expo is about to officially open. At first I was thinking to myself, you know what? It'll probably be busy when it opens. I'll wait until later when I can go there in peace. But curiosity got the better of me and I just really want to see that 8000 series mock-up. So I'm going right when the expo opens and knowing myself, I'll be back several times throughout the next week. So while we wait for the expo to open, let's take a look outside. The walls of the tent have already been rolled up, so it's the perfect opportunity to take in the flashy exterior of the Metro 8000 series. The 8000 series is a future train currently being built by Hitachi. While Hitachi is a Japanese company famous for building some of the best subway trains, regional trains, and high-speed trains in the world, these trains for Wamata will be built nearby in Hagerstown, Maryland. A total of 256 cars are on order, with an option for up to 800 cars. They will replace the oldest trains currently in service, the 2000 and 3000 series trains. I overheard one of the staff members at the event telling someone that they expect them to be in service in 2026 or 2027. On the front, we see a design that reminds me a little bit of the new subway trains in New York City. Though those trains are being built by a different company, I just couldn't help but notice the similarities. The lights look modern without being over the top, but the one concern that I did have was the destination sign. I could not imagine a train being delivered in the 2020s that would have orange LED signs. I talked to one of the staff members present and they told me that they expect that the trains will have full color LEDs inside and out. Moving on to the side of the train, aside from the cool blue motifs by the door, the first thing to stand out is the open gangway. Currently, every car on the metro is closed off, something that is common on subways in the US. I know that among transit enthusiasts here, there's often a dislike for open gangways, and on social media there's definitely a lot of misinformation about them. I personally am very happy that Metro decided to go this route. Open gangways just have a ton of advantages. They are actually safer. Not only is it much simpler to walk away from an unpleasant situation, the design actually increases social control. The more visibility there is, the less incidents occur. That is one of the main reasons why European railways began adopting the concept in the first place. The 8000 series trains are being built as two car pairs with an open gangway in the middle. They cannot make a full eight car train with open gangways because most maintenance facilities are not able to handle trains that long. And I was like, wait a minute, there's no electric bus anywhere. I thought there was gonna be an electric bus. It's just parked on the street. Of course the outside looks really great, but we wanna know what is it like on the inside? Well, they should open in about a minute and then we'll find out. Right at 8 o'clock, they opened the gate, and we were let into the tent. The first stop is at a merch table, where we got some pens, flyers, and the choice between a tote bag or a water bottle. Then up the ramp we go, to finally get up close and personal with the mock-up of the 8000 series. Hopefully soon this will just be at a regular metro station.
One great feature of these trains is that they will not only have a dedicated wheelchair space, as the current trains do, but they will also have a dedicated bicycle space. Next, I want to look at some of the passenger information screens on board. These large screens are similar to the ones already used on the 7000 series, albeit a little bit bigger. But by the doors, there will be these tablet-style screens facing both directions. There's a real one already on display outside, which I will show you in a little bit. These new screens that are by the doors are gonna be great. Honestly, you'll never have to look at your phone again. Next, let's try out the seats. <sighs> seats are a little hard. But then I found out, thankfully, that these are not the real seats that will be on the train. There's an actual example of the seats that they will have outside, and once again, I'll get to that part in a little bit. And I think so far, open gangway aside, my favorite thing are the like Washington-themed decals that are kind of by the gangways. American transit vehicles often lack a bit of character, and this just adds so much. And I think it's really well done. Okay, the moment many people have been waiting for, about to walk through the open gangway. Personally, I would much rather be able to quickly move farther away from something rather than either take the dangerous crossing between the cars that currently exists or wait until we arrive at a station. And then the other main feature is the updated seating layout. So between that and the open gangways, there's going to be space for so many more people on here. So on one side, there will be the traditional forward and backward facing seats, just like they currently have on all trains. But on the other side, there will be benches facing the aisle. It's a fairly innovative layout that you don't see in too many other places. And like I said, it has its advantages. There's more room for people to stand, meaning a larger capacity for the train overall. It also improves accessibility. I think it's a clever way to increase the number of people that can ride in a car, while still giving people the option of facing whichever direction they prefer. One thing to note is that this is a mock-up, not an actual train car. The real cars are going to be longer than this. I assume that they'll have three doors per car, just like the current trains. The mock-up merely serves to demonstrate what the interior layout of the train will look like. This pull by the doors once again reminds me of the trains in New York. The train will have more screens than the current trains, and I know that some people don't like that about the New York trains, saying that it overwhelms them, but personally, I'm not bothered by it. I will say, however, that these screens here are not as large or prevalent as the ones in New York. Honestly, I think there's a good amount of them, although I'm a bit surprised at how small they are. And once again, fingers crossed that we'll get full color LEDs here instead of the orange one. <laughs> now we've made it to the front of the mock-up. So the best part is you can even take a peek in the cab. Now obviously this is not what the real cab is going to look like. But the the chair I'm sitting in, that's going to be the real chair. Speaking of which, let's go outside and try out some of the actual seats that are going to be on these trains. Once you step outside the train, there's still more to see and experience. After walking across the ramp, there's a few screens that let you fill out a short survey, basically just asking you what features of the train you're most excited about. That's going to be nice. Yeah. And these are the new screens that'll be by the doors? Yeah, yeah, by the doors, yeah. It shows the next stations as well as transfer information, but also the time, the weather, and it looks like even the news. Perfect for a city like DC. Time to try out the seats. Oh, they're really nice. They're definitely more padded than the 7000 series. And after we're done trying it all out, there's a few more cute souvenirs like stickers and these cool foldable cardboard models. Also, can't forget the many fun and unique photo opportunities. You could just tell that all the staff present were having so much fun here. And now for an opinion that matters even more than mine. <laughs> Yeah, they have a screen outside already. So what do you think of the layouts, like having the forward and the side? Yeah. Yeah. 
It's just because the metro is getting so busy lately, especially with tourists, and it's going to give you much more space to get in for people who can, like me, who can meet every day. So it'll be nice to actually have space and not get shoved in like sardine. Ooh, warm. My feeties. So these are the real seats. All right, let's quickly take a look at the electric buses. So this is a battery electric New Flyer Excelsior XE60, and these have actually already been in service since the fall of 2023. They run on Route W4 between Anacostia, Benning Road, and Deanwood stations. Nevertheless, since Metro is planning to receive many more electric buses in the future, the bus here was included as part of the expo. Most features inside are the same as the newest diesel buses in the fleet, though I did notice some minor differences here and there. The outside livery has a touch of green to it, however. And that is the end of this year's Cherry Blossom Special. There's just so much beauty around. I love springtime. A highlight for me was obviously that Fleet of the Future Expo. We have to wait a little bit longer, but one day those beautiful new trains will be running right here on the Metro. And of course I'm gonna be there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. Check out our Instagram, our Patreon, all that stuff. We'll see you next time.